Hey bag lady, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Ask Sarah, my weekly Q&A chat. So hey to all my bag ladies and bag dudes. I saw a lot of people commenting before we started on Facebook and YouTube. Um, Mary, hi Mary, thanks for joining me tonight on this uh, beautiful Tuesday night. Um, I have to admit my husband started training our nine-year-old daughter Violet on how to work the controls for our live videos. Hey Pamela. Um, so Violet, um, she got trained over the weekend. We have a lot of things going on on the computer. That's how we run these live shows. And Violet was really disappointed on Sunday when um, my husband told her she wasn't ready yet. But um, that's Violet. She's putting all these comments on the screen. Hey, Jerry. Thanks for joining me, Jerry. Um, so Violet is manning the controls for the, the comments right now. So um, she's nine, and um, I'm amazed at what the kids these days can uh, do with technology. So anyway, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, tonight, I wanted to share sort of a behind the scenes. I've gotten a lot of requests for showing behind the scenes things, um, studio things, and other other videos and so we decided to share a video on my pattern designing process so from start to finish the process starts with a sketch and um, I've shown you all the steps that it takes from the sketch until releasing the pattern for all of you to enjoy so um, if you have any questions for me let me know if they're either sewing related or bag related let me know in the comments I'll be answering some questions live after the video it's a short 15 minute video after the video, Danny will also be joining me on set. He'll be putting those questions on the screen, and we'll get to as many of those as we can. So I hope you enjoy this video. Again, this is my pattern design process. Enjoy. Hey, bag ladies. So I've had a lot of requests for some more behind the scenes views. And so today I wanted to show you all the process behind getting a sewing pattern ready from start to finish. And so my very first step is usually I like to sit on the couch or lay in bed, take a piece of scrap paper and a pen and just sketch out um, a very basic drawing of what I want the finished bag to look like. So here's one of my recent sketches. As you can see, the drawing of the bag is very rudimentary. I'm not so good at drawing. And so um, I've drawn the bag in my head. It's definitely more fl fleshed out how it looks, but um, I've got the measurements approximately of what I want the bag to look like just based on past bags how I know um, the sizing comes into play this is about where I'm shooting for as far as the size of the finished bag and as you can see I've gone ahead and written down some fabric requirements so um, I'm very much estimating in my head how much exterior and lining fabric I already know which interfacings I'll be using and again I'm just estimating um, what those amounts will be so I've got my foam interfacing my shape flex and also the Peltex down here. Um, and usually my Peltex is listed as optional. And then I'll also go ahead and write down any purse hardware zippers or any other things that I think that I'll need. And again, the zipper is usually optional. Um, that'll be more specific when I get down to actually sewing the bag. So as you can see, the second half of the page, I've written down my exterior and lining pattern pieces and which pieces I think I'll need for each one. And often they'll need actual physical pattern pieces and sometimes they'll be measurements so for example this accordion piece right here that'll probably be a rectangle so that'll be a measurement in the pattern instead of an actual template represented so um, that's the start to the brand new pattern and then sometimes depending on what kind of pattern I'm working on but if it's a short one I like to do this so on the back of the paper I've gone ahead and written down um, the different sections in the pattern and I've also written notes down for myself that it, so that I don't forget to, to add a certain step in the pattern because um, sometimes I get really excited about a new idea and I know that I want, um, for example, some snaps in this portion, but sometimes when I get down to turning the computer down, computer on and starting to write, I'll forget to add the snaps. So I wrote myself little notes for each section. Um, depending on the pattern, most of my pattern instructions, each section is between three steps to 15 steps. So again, these are just the, the sections written out and they'll each have um, a list of steps underneath them. So after I have these all sketched out, 
I'll take myself over to the computer and open up my software and start writing the pattern. Okay, so once I've got my initial sketch and idea finished, I move over to the computer and I'll start writing the sewing instructions. Okay, so the software that I use for the sewing instructions is called Adobe InDesign, and this software is strictly for layouts. So layouts of books, layouts of brochures, that's pretty much what it does and it does it really well. So on my screen is an instruction that I'm in the middle of writing. And as you can see, um, let's look at step number eight over here. I've just written each step's instructions and to the left of the step, I have a, a blank box with an X through it. So later on, when I go ahead and make the bag and I shoot my step photos, I'll come back and drop a photo in the corresponding box matching that step. Um, but for now, I, I don't have the photos prepared yet at this point. So I went ahead and I finished writing the entire pattern. And as you'll notice the blue text where it says right here, assemble the lining, that's just um, the section of the steps. So every step that follows that section is corresponding to assembling the lining. Okay, so after I have my pattern instructions fully written out, I'll move over to a different bit of software. This one's called Adobe Illustrator, and Adobe Illustrator is for drawing. So this is where I'll draw my pattern pieces. So I've got a document opened up in Adobe Illustrator. This was something that I was working on for Court Club for the eyeglass case. And basically, I just use my, I actually use a mouse. I'm a little bit old fashioned. I know a lot of people use um, a writing tool, a stylus but I just like using my mouse. That's how I learned how to do it and that's how I continue doing it to this day. And so um, if I know the size of my pattern pieces, I'll place a rectangle on my, on my artboard just so I can use that as a guide. And then I'll go ahead and draw some curved edges to it and I can always remove the rectangle later. So for example, if I need to, to make the corner of a bag, I'll just draw using um, a tool and it, basically I could sit here for a few hours drawing the pattern pieces till I have all of them. So um, it's a little bit more in depth of a process, but um, this is the software that I use to draw the pattern pieces. And after I finish drawing the pattern pieces, then it's time to cut fabric out and start sewing. Okay, so once I have the instructions finished, it's time to get to sewing the bag. So while I'm sewing the bag, I'm also taking the step photos. So normally the night before I cut out all of my fabric and interfacing and attach the fabric to the interfacing because it normally takes me two to three hours. So I like to have it done at least the day before and then so I can start the, the work day just by sewing. So as I sew each step, I have my camera ready and this is actually where I take the step photos, just right here. So I get the camera ready and I take a photo after I finish every single step. Um, by the time I'm finished with all the step photos, the bag is all finished as well. And then I'm ready to take those photos and edit them in Photoshop. Also, while I'm sewing, I take the, the written instructions that I have, print them out, and I'll actually make notes on the pattern. So maybe a helpful hint um, if I need to add something or change a measurement. So if I need to do maybe one and a half inches instead for the magnetic snap, I'll write that down and I'll transfer all of these written instructions later into my original InDesign file. Okay, after I've made my prototype bag and taken all of the step photos with my camera, then I move over to yet another type of software. This is called Adobe Photoshop, and the purpose of Photoshop is editing photos. So I'll take all of my step photos from my camera and input them into Photoshop. So on my screen, I've got one of my step photos from one of my older patterns and I'm going to edit this photo for the size of the pattern. So um, I'll need to make it a certain size to fit in my pattern template. So um, I'll just go ahead and do that. Sometimes the lighting on the particular photo is a little bit dark so I'll make some adjustments to that so I can make the photo lighter or darker. I can also put some text on the screen. So for instance if I want to call attention to the fact that you need to sew this with um, a half inch seam allowance perhaps. I'll go ahead and type that on the screen as well. So I can do all of those things in Photoshop and then I'll go ahead and open my pattern instructions and place those photos next to the instructions that I had already written. 
Okay, now that all my photos are edited, I'll go back into InDesign, which is where I had my instructions written, and I'll just drop all of those photos next to the step where they should go. So here's a pattern open on my computer screen, and here's where I've dropped all of the photographs next to the correct step in the instructions. So if you recall from before, these boxes were just blank with an X through them, and now they have all of the photos filled in. After the initial pattern is finished with all of the instructions and the step photos, then I'll send the pattern out to my pattern testers, and I usually give them about three weeks to work on the pattern before returning the feedback to me. So the types of feedback that I'm looking for is if each of the steps makes sense, um, if the supply list is accurate, for instance, if I say that you need one yard of exterior fabric and maybe you needed a yard and a half, um, those are the kinds of things that I'm looking for, and any kind of errors in the patterns, typos especially. Um, if they found, for instance, that I asked for them to place the magnetic snap one inch down from the top of the bag and they thought it would be better at one and a half inches, those are the kinds of things that they let me know in the pattern instructions as well as the typical things like if everything printed out okay, um, if all of the steps were present, and if everything made sense. That's the most important thing because um, the steps need to make sense to everybody and everybody, no matter what skill level, should be able to read them and make sense of the instructions. So I've got one of my tester emails open on my screen and these are just some of the comments that I received for a recent pattern test. And so they just let me know um, for instance, right here, page six, step 15, the third photo doesn't show leaving this, the eight inch opening for turning, so they're just letting me know that I need to add um, some notation on the photo, maybe text or an arrow, showing how something is done in that step photo and any corrections. Um, for instance, right here, they say page nine, the heading says assemble the front pocket, but the instructions are for making the tabs. So just basic corrections that they're giving me and that's really helpful for me when editing the final pattern. Okay, so after I go through all of the tester notes, um, and I try to do that in the same day just so everything's fresh in my mind, but I'll open the original pattern instructions back up in InDesign and input any corrections. So if I've made any errors or typos, of course I fix those immediately. Um, but sometimes going through the tester notes, some of the feedback that I'm getting is subjective. So for instance, if they'll make a suggestion, um, I like to sew the flap this way, or this is what I did instead. I just have to take that into consideration with um, what I had in mind for the pattern in the first place. So I just sort of have to weigh in my mind, um, especially if there's conflicting um, feedback from the testers. Maybe some of the testers liked to sew it this way, um, and they didn't like my other option that I gave, so I just have to kind of make the final call and decide what will go in the finished pattern. So I have InDesign open up on my computer and I just go ahead and change any of the text that I need to change, um, fix any of the typos, um, add anything if I need to add any helpful hints, which I usually place in red. So I'll do that based on the tester feedback that I've gotten. Okay, besides having the pattern finished, I need to take my camera. Usually I like to go outside and take photos of the bag. So we have a wooden fence next to our house and I like to hang the bags on the fence and take photos that way. We also live down the street from a school and the cement steps going up to the school is another place that I like to lay my bags out and take photographs, especially if the bag comes in multiple sizes. So if there's a small, medium and large bag, having them set out on the stairs is a good way that I can get all of the bags in the same shot. So usually it takes me a few hours to get the pictures that I like. Um, I prefer shooting outside so I can get some natural light and I also prefer an overcast day so that I don't have sunlight blaring on the project. So um, taking the photos is probably my least favorite part of this process just because um, I feel like I'm not so good and it takes me probably twice as long as it would take somebody who was better at taking photographs, um, but it has to be done because people like to see the photos of the finished projects. Okay, so at this point we're in the home stretch as far as preparing the pattern. There's usually a couple more things that I need to finish, and as, as per usual, a lot of the things that I need to do are on the computer. So um, one of the things that I do to prepare a new pattern for release is get a blog post ready. So 
The blog post has information about the pattern. It has all of the photographs that I've taken myself, so just different views of what the bag looks like. And I also post photos from my pattern tester. So I've got on my computer um, my website back end open, and here's just some photographs. These are some of my own photogra photographs, and then all of the tester photos, and then I have the tester's name, and if they have social media, um, the link to their social media. So you'll see on my blog post all of the tester photos, and I always think it's really helpful, and I'm appreciative to have these tester photos to post because as you can see, everyone uses different fabrics in their project, and sometimes I feel like the fabric can sort of change your mind about the sewing pattern. Maybe the bag that I made is not um, to your fabric taste, but maybe you'll see it in one of the pattern testers versions and it'll change your mind and you'll really fall in love with the pattern. So um, preparing the blog post is always super important for getting um, the pattern ready for public release. Okay, last but not least, I get my website ready for the product listing and so we usually shoot a trailer video for new patterns since we've been doing videos in the last um, almost one year. So. Um, Danny and I shoot trailer videos. Uh, we just shoot about a one minute video showing what the bag looks like and I'll explain during the video what what details and techniques you'll learn. So for instance, if you'll be making a zipper pocket or an adjustable strap, I find it's helpful um, to have that presented in a video as well just so people fully understand and they can also get little sneak peeks of what the video looks like for that particular pattern. Okay, so here's my website back end, and I've put the trailer video in. I've put some specific details about the pattern, like the finish size, how long the video is, and just pertinent details about that sewing pattern. And so all of that information, the trailer videos, information about the pattern will go into the product listing, and then it's time to make everything go live. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. That was my design process from the sketch of a pattern idea until um, releasing the pattern out into the world. So uh, my husband Danny's joining me. Um, we, we saw a lot of great questions coming through while that video was playing. Um, we're going to get to the questions in a second, but I brought out this quilt. Um, if you were watching Social Sunday on Sunday, so bright. <laughs> we showed uh, this quilt that I made um, because it was an, a medallion quilt and I was doing a book review on medallion quilts and I'm not going to open up the whole quilt, but um, this is not Danny's favorite project that I've made and uh, what happened after we talked about this on the show? I received hate mail and it was from two <laughs> ladies, my wife and daughter, and they <laughs> both said, how dare you talk bad about that quilt. I, I like the quilt except for the yellow. Uh, the yellow just doesn't, doesn't mesh well. Alright, um, okay. So um, we had a really good question actually before the chat even started um, and it was from Terry. Terry said, Tell me about Danny's involvement with Sew Sweetness. Does he sew? Does he do any cutting for you? Does he work for the business or does he have a second job? So I think we've been doing this together for coming up on a year now. And tell everybody what you were doing at the beginning. You were still working your job. So while you were working your job, what were you doing for the for Sew Sweetness at that time? Uh, initially when I started is when Sarah got into the cork um, sales and she was getting overwhelmed. There's a lot of stuff going on and I started to do all the shipping of the cork. I even attempted to cut the cork initially, but it wasn't my cup of tea, and I didn't... He was really sorry, but you were really slow at cutting the cork. Yeah, I, I'm not used to using a rotary cutter, and <laughs> it just wasn't... Like I said, I didn't like it, so I, maybe I was really procrastinating with it. But anyway, so I did um, all the shipping up until probably a month ago. Um, Sarah would print the orders. I'd take the orders. I'd box them up, pack them together. If there are any errors with the orders, it's definitely Sarah's fault because she wrote the wrong description down on the paper. But, you know, since I print the orders now, I print invoices. And if you guys order from us, you'll see a nice invoice in your box and they will have all the stuff printed out. So we know who fault it would be. But anyways, so I did that as well. And then now, like I said, I print the orders now. And for all the videos, I've always shot the videos. I've edited the videos. Um, I do all the technology type jobs mm -hmm. for our company. And um, I since no longer work for my other job, this is what I do full time. And, you know, I really enjoy it because I would say what I did before was fun. But this is not like work because I really I love technology. I've always had new phones, new computers, anything, TVs, voice automated stuff in our house, you know, control lights, control the temperature, whatever you can name it. I'm into technology. So this was right up my alley. I really loved it. And so now 
even this week I had a new thing. I was doing a little social media stuff. So it's always changed with the business. You know, I'm like a jack of all trades, not master of any, but you know, I try to mix up a little bit and see how it goes, you know. Do you want to share with them a funny story about either of your previous jobs, what you used to do? I don't know if you do or not. I don't know if I have any funny stories about my previous jobs. Or what you did? Uh, well, I, my last two jobs. Well, the one job I had the whole time, it was clinical skills assessment for National Board of Medical Examiners. Uh, people, medical graduates would come in. They have to get, you know, graded and evaluated for they get into a hospital. And that's where I would be doing, like, the grading and evaluating. Uh, and while I had that job, I also had a part-time job at TSA, uh, you know, at the airport. That job sucked. <laughs> and it, I've worked there almost two years, and it just wasn't for me. I didn't like it at all. What What didn't you like about it? Uh, just the what you had to do. You know, everyone hates TSA. They think you're out to get you, but, you know, when I worked there, we're out to get no one. You're, it's a reactive company, not a proactive. Like, you had to take your shoes off because there was a, a someone trying to smuggle a, a bomb through their shoes. You can't have liquids because in, uh, I think it was Great Britain, they have Lucasade. It's like our Gatorade, and they were trying to smuggle a, a bomb-type device in a very thick viscosity, like almost oil, but it was it looked like in a Gatorade bottle. So, and the same thing with like your pants when they check no belts on because of the you know the belt bomber and stuff like that. So, people like, oh, you're out to get drugs. You know, I was never out to look for anyone's drugs or in their bags. Or I saw something funny on TV where recently a, a celebrity's like, yeah, you know, they're out, they're looking for to get this stuff. I'm like, no. I, when I worked there, it wasn't like that, and we just want everyone to get through. No one wants to get a pat down, and the, the worst thing is you never want to give someone a pat down as a guy. <laughs> yeah, funny story for that. In our training class when we first started there, I had to, well, they're like, all right, here's the procedures. This is what you have to do for a pat down, and so, like, all right, everyone pair up in the class, and it's super awkward. You, you meet these people, you're friends with them, then you're giving them pat downs <laughs> over and over and over, and it was quite awkward. Oh, Violet's giving us a sign that um, we're, we're having talking a, too loud. Yeah, we're talking too loud. Thanks, Violet. All right, so let's get to some more sewing questions. You want to put some on oh, the yeah. screen? Thank goodness you don't have to do pat downs. You can just uh, set up videos for yeah. for Facebook Live and YouTube Live. <laughs> Louise wants to know, Sarah, do you ever use a rotary cutter instead of scissors when cutting your fabric? Um, I guess this is just me and this is my bad habit. When I'm cutting out pattern pieces, I draw my pieces with my friction pen on the wrong side of my fabric and then I use my scissors. I know the rotary cutter is uh, more accurate and probably a lot faster, but it's just my habit. I'm used to drawing it and cutting it with scissors, and I'm not willing to change that. So, But, yeah, rotary cutter would be faster. <laughs> Teresa wants to know what games do you play, Danny? Well, I, I like to play Rocket League. There's a new game coming out. It's in beta. It's called Sea of Thieves. It's going to be released pretty soon. It's a lot of fun. You're on a pirate ship. you got to look for treasure, and you take down other pirates. Lots of fun. Uh, when, we, play... when we first started dating, you were playing like World of Warcraft. No, which... I didn't play World of Warcraft yet. Okay. We played a game together called Risk Your Life, which is like a World of Warcraft kind of game. And Christmas came along and someone bought me World of Warcraft. Oh, yeah. It wasn't me. And that's what got me hooked. That's where I'm... I actually met my friends that I'm friends with till to this day since started World of Warcraft. And that was, I don't know, 2004, 2005, something like that. So basically, computer he plays computer games. Now our son plays computer games, and we have to cut him off at a certain time. All right. We play together, my son. We play yeah. Rock League together. Another game's called PUBG, Player Unknown Battleground, and Fortnite. Okay. All right. Yeah. Nobody knows what you're saying, so <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Oh, I saw somebody. Violet said somebody asked a question before um, we started the chat. Um, what my favorite? Let me. I'll get to that question you put up in a yeah. second. But somebody wanted to know what my favorite pattern is, and I'm not sure. I had a tough time thinking of that, but um, uh, let me hold it over here. So the Cumberland backpack. This is the size small. Um, I guess a toddler backpack size. There's a size large, which is like a traditional size backpack, and I made these for our kids when we went to Disney for the first time. So um, they still use them an awful lot all the time. When we go to my grandma's house, they put their sketchbooks and markers and stuff inside, or if we take cards. So they've gotten a lot. These backpacks are probably the things that have gotten the most use out of all the things that I've made. Okay. All right. Let me get to Karen's question now. Um, Karen wanted to know, Danny, are you going to help Sarah maybe design some man-geared bags and accessories? Uh, she's never asked my input for that kind of stuff. I would gladly help her. And Do you have any ideas for a man bag? You know, I see a lot of people like, like that crossover what's it is it called a crossover bag 
where you like, have that sh- the like strap. Like a messenger bag? Yeah, like or, a messenger bag. Or a backpack. And, yeah, I, when I was at my, my other jobs, I used, a, like, it's like a backpack, but oh, it was yeah, a single strap. I and I used to, like, carrying all my stuff in there, and it was easy to put on, didn't hurt your back. That's really a good comfortable. idea. That's a good idea. Okay. Do you sew, Danny? Yes, I sewed a couple things. I To show Sarah that I thought I could, you know, make it like quilts. That's not too tough. A dress, that would be tough. A bag, yeah, that seems tough, but a quilt seems like it's flat surface, not 3D. So I cut out, well, first how it started was we were at a fabric store. I saw a ton of Star Trek, Doctor Who fabric, Star Wars. So we got it, and I'm thinking, like, I got all this cool stuff. I asked Sarah to make something for me. She's like, I got no time. I, I got no time. I got no time. That's what she's like. I got no time. So I'm like, you know what? She went away. I think she was teaching somewhere for a weekend. And so Violet and William, my son, uh, I laid the stuff out and we, I just cut strips out like probably seven inches wide as far as the, so maybe one yard as far as the piece was. And after I cut all these strips together, I just sewed the strips together, probably seven strips in one direction and then like three strips perpendicular to it. And then when Sarah came home, she actually took, I wanted Minky for the back because I love the soft feel of it. And she put the Minky on the back for me, but I did the, the quilt top. Mm. It was pretty fun. And all we right. still have that quilt too. <laughs> this is funny you say about this one loudly because it says my three sons play Fortnite loudly <laughs> you know my wife when she goes to bed and it, it, we're, I'm down here in the office which are our computers at it's where I game and stuff she's upstairs in the bedrooms and she'll shut this door we have a door going to another office area like bedroom then we have a door that goes to the upstairs and all three of those doors are shut and the next morning I'm like you know I really heard you game loud and I'm like I was not yelling but I have noise canceling uh, headphones, so if something goes on, and to myself it doesn't seem loud, but I it sounds like you're screaming yeah, when you're playing, and especially situations. if you make a good shot, you're what? What do you say when you? I don't know. I don't. I just scream. Usually, it's like it'd be like a rocket league, something like adrenaline pumping, fast game. Uh, I just was like, I don't know. There's not like a catchphrase. I don't want to say something like seems silly. <laughs> screaming. All right. Uh, Kelly wanted to know what kind of sewing machine do you use, regular or industrial? Um, I use a Juki TL2010Q. And since you're watching on YouTube, I have a video on my YouTube channel showing my sewing machine. Um, so if you want to take a look at that. Um, so it's it's all metal. It's not technically an industrial machine. Um, it, it's not in a table top or anything like that. Um, but it is really heavy. Uh, but I love using it. It's straight stitch only. Joni wants to know, um, hi, you two, Sarah, can I use Chicago stru- screws instead of rivets? I don't have a rivet press and it's not in my budget right now. Yes, you sure can. I've actually never used sh- uh, Chicago screws before, but yes, they're a comparable replacement for the rivets. I guess I should get some and, and sh- make a video on how to use them. So much about me showing my quilt next Tuesday. You got it. I will show oh. it. Donna wanted to know, do you plan on making patterns with more hardware? I'd love to learn how to add hardware to patterns that don't have it. Um, yes, that's a good idea for a future video, maybe how to add uh, to a strap, maybe rectangles, maybe a video on just an adjustable strap. Um, yes, we will definitely do that. You know, really quickly, it's my wife's really been pondering going over and getting a machine that, um, what, what are they called? What? The machine where you can make like, designs. And oh, an embroidery machine. Embroidery machine. If you guys have great recommendations, like, hey, I've done my research. I've tried going on YouTube and looking for reviews and comparison like I do with like tech, tech products. There's really nothing like that. It shows, hey, this works like this. I know sometimes uh, some machines are faster and some are slower. I, I really would like to play with one. Honestly, if she would got it, I would totally do some cool designs on something and make some t-shirts and like some So Sweetness gear and stuff like that. Can you guys recommend to us what machine you have or you would like to have, and why is it better than another machine, you can say. So if you like uh, Bernina, or if you like uh, a Janome, uh, what's your machine and what you like to use? Because I think we need to get one, and uh, it would be a lot of fun to have it. And, and what, f- your dream machine, I would say. Like, what's the one you really would love to have? And I feel like this search for an embroidery machine is the longest drawn-out drawn out process ever. I've been asking people for months already what kind of machine to get, and I just... I'm not sure. So, <laughs> yes, I need uh, continued recommendations. Lauren wants to know, are you planning another retreat anytime soon? So we have one coming up in June. There's a few more tickets left. It's June 21st through the 24th in Chicago. Um, the information's on my website. We have another one that we have not announced yet in September, at the, the very end of September, also in Chicago. 
And um, yes, for now we're just having them in Chicago just because it's easier to get all our equipment there to make sure everybody has what they need. And since we live about five minutes away from the retreat location at a hotel, um, and also the hotel is only five minutes away from O'Hare Airport, so it's really convenient. Anyway, if people forget something, since we live five minutes away, we can just pop back over and get thread or fabric or, or whatever is necessary. And we just, for now, we feel like we can do a better job at making sure everyone has a great time by having it near our home. Um, Lynn wants to know how large oh, is your, oh, Lynn sorry. wanted to know how large is your sewing room? What is this room, Danny? Like 11 by 12? Uh, I think it's 11 by 13. Okay. It's a small bedroom and we're both, our filming area and the sewing room, it's the same room. So yeah, it, it, think of it like a, it's a, a 12 by 12 room and have a T going down it. And the T top parts are desks and the split part is what you're looking at right here. Sarah has like the, yeah. So this desk is right in the middle of the room. Yes. It splits at the room in half. Yep. Uh, Debbie said, uh, show us how to use a rivet press. Um, I actually did a video. When did we do that? Uh, late last year on how do you, I showed my rivet press. It's a tabletop press from Minkus Margo. Um, I talked about different dyes, different sizes, because everything that you're using the rivet press for has a different die. So um, check YouTube or my website um, under tutorials and you can find the video for the rivet press. Um, and I talk about all the sizes and the numbers and everything in the video for that. Jerry said, y'all are adorable. Is there ever any conflict between you with y'all working together. What's the major conflict with- Where we're gonna eat lunch at, or if she's making lunch. That We work well together. I mean, honestly, you know, it's funny when we had work done at our house, people were like, it's really weird. I don't think I could work with my spouse or, you know, uh, being around your spouse that long, you have, you know, friction between two. It's not like that really with us. Sarah will have bad days, such as this morning. She's grumpy, wakes up. I'm like, Sarah, go take a nap. And she goes, takes a nap. <laughs> and she's like a new person again. But I mean, other than that, it's really, my Knock only on my only complaint, and I told him this uh, when he first started working with me full time, is every time around lunchtime he'd be, he'd be like, "What are we having for lunch?" <laughs> and I took that to mean, "What are you cooking me for lunch?" And I'm working all day, and I, I you I'd know, rather go out to eat anyways. Yeah, that's our big vice. We like going out to eat. True. I don't know. I enjoy going out to a restaurant to eat. Connie wants to know, Sarah, have you used purse feet on any of your bags? Yes, I'm trying to think if there's one in reach that I could grab. I don't think so. Violet, is there one? Okay, Violet's going to go run and grab one. <laughs> yeah, I love using purse feet. They're super inexpensive. They're very cheap. And the purse feet usually remind me of um, when I was in school, the metal brads that we would use to, to put in loose leaf paper to make sort of a booklet. Oh, this is Violet's bag that she brought. I made this, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago, and there's purse feet on the bottom. Oh. Violet, one, would you press number looks six? Looks like one purse foot. Well, Violet, what happened to the fourth purse foot? It fell off. It fell off? Oh. Okay. Well, that's an easy fix because I can just put another one in there. Anyway, these are the, there we go. <laughs> there's the purse feet. Anyway, to install the purse feet, um, and we'll do a video on this sometime, but it's just, you just make a slit through the right side of your fabric with your seam ripper. I always like to reinforce slits with a bit of seam sealant. Um, like fray check or fray, fray block and then it just it the prongs just go through the right side of the fabric and you open them up it's the it's the easiest thing ever and I, I feel like it's really impressive because everybody likes having purse feet so you don't have to set your bag on the, the dirty ground. Kelly wanted to know where do you get the metal hardware can you list your sources? Um, Emmeline Bags at, which is emmelinebags.com is a really good place for hardware she has tons and tons and tons of varieties and different finishes even like a rainbow uh, metallic finish, um, silver, gunmetal, gold, rose gold. She's got tons of stuff. So Emmeline Bags, I think she has usually bulk discounts. Even though she's in Canada, shipping is really reasonable. So um, definitely recommend Emmeline Bags. Lauren wanted to know, how many kids do you have in their ages? I have uh, three and a half, or is that three and a half years old? Uh, I'm yeah, not probably sure. three and a half year old, and it's hard to get oh, to because okay. they're all under five. Oh, probably a three-year-old and a five-year-old. Oh, okay. Like to play in my sewing room. Um, Violet is nine, nine and a half, and uh, uh, William's eleven. Uh, Violet likes to be. Violet really likes to be crafty. She uses my sewing machine occasionally. Um, I had a inexpensive plastic machine for her to learn on at first, but um, there's nothing like my machine, so she's just careful. She uses my Juki. And uh, William just doesn't have any... William's a gamer like his dad, so he's not really interested in crafty things. 
He likes to draw, though. Yeah, he, doesn't, he likes, he likes so we to draw We had a party, comics. actually, this past weekend. Oh, we yeah. had some friends uh, over, and his brother and sister around our kids' age as well. We are going to go Mitra golfing, when we went there, uh, it had a two-hour wait. And we've been this place multiple times before, never any problems. I don't know if there was a birthday party or something. And we asked kids if we want to do something else. And we had, there was a Michael's right in the same strip mall area. And like, yeah, we'll go there, look for a craft or something to do. And they wanted to get like a big sketch pad. And we got some crayons and markers. And they pulled up on YouTube, it's called Muffalo Potato, how to make a character. Very simple, like with letters and numbers, mm -hmm. you connect them together. And they made great little figures and stuff. And they played with it for maybe two hours and they had a great time. So you don't always have to go out and do stuff. Yeah. Staying at home sometimes is a lot of fun too. Yeah, Muffalo Potato on YouTube is awesome. It yep. teach, teaches you how to draw. Um, really cool characters. Like famous, famous characters. characters. Yep. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. Uh, Nita wants to know, would you consider making a video for the Aragon bag? I know it's older, but it's my favorite. Yeah, I, ha I have that on my list. Um, I want to say maybe August. I'm not going to make a promise because I, I can't remember exactly what I had on the list. But uh, the Aragon bag is sort of the first uh, bag that I designed as a diaper bag. And um, I've made, I think I made five of them. I've made a lot of those. Uh, Melissa wants to know, as you know, I like turnstile locks. Have you done any bags with them? Yes. Um, oh, these uh, Cumberland backpacks have the, the turn locks on them. So, yeah, that's it right there. I'll do a video on the turn lock also. My list is getting longer for the... Hey, we like more content, you know? What we more should do. More stuff you guys want when we give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I never bought Fray Check or Fray Block. I'm using clear nail polish. Is it comparable? Oh, I don't know. I've never used nail polish. Um, I'm trying to see if my Fray Block is with an easy grasp. Yeah, I see it. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab it real Go quick, it. okay? Now we get her out the show. It's all mine. How you guys doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the fray check. The fray block is in a different looking tube. It's sort of like a reminds me of a toothpaste container mm -hmm. except metal. You can see it's it's very water like. It's not like nail yeah, polish. it's liquid. Yeah, it's yeah, it's liquid. Um, I don't know. That's interesting about the nail polish. I'll have to try that. Um, Karen said, do your kids inspire your bag design ideas? Like, Mom, you should make a bag with, uh, yeah, Violet, you want to grab your Amethyst Project bag that's in the other room? And what's the drawing site? It's called, it's on YouTube. It's a nice set of videos, Muffalo Potato. Like, that's, buff, like Buffalo, but with an M. Yeah. Muffalo and then Potato. No, the Amethyst Project bag, the purple one. Uh, it's in the playroom. Okay. Um... So Violet did inspire a recent pattern. I think it was about a year ago. And I tell this story when I do a lecture. So Christmas morning, Violet got Violet and William each got a bunch of sketchbooks and pencils and markers and all sorts of art stuff. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So Violet asked me to design a bag for her um, sketch stuff that she got uh, for Christmas. And we sat down and we sketched out an idea. And I said, all right, I'll turn this into a pattern. So... Two hours later, I'm rearranging some things in my sewing room, and Violet comes in, and she's like, all right, where's my bag? <laughs> and I was like, you only asked me two hours ago and uh, to design a pattern. I, I, I don't know if I could even sew it in two hours. So here's her amethyst. This is the original amethyst project bag. Um, she, uh, sorry. Here's where she wanted all her pens and pencils. She's got stuff in the mesh pocket. His Her book's down here. So... Um, that's a funny story about Violet and her request. I don't think I got to her request for like a month or two later, and she would ask me every weekend, and I'd be like, yeah, I just got to finish this pattern first, Violet, or Violet, now I got to finish this project. I have a deadline for this, so she had to wait a while for for her. Yeah, I'm going to pass this off to you, Violet. <laughs> Cindy wants to know, will you do a video on sewing the zipper off at an angle video? So I think you mean, um, maybe you mean... Like in the cotton candy pouch, uh, I saw questions, I think, on Facebook in the chat before we started about veering the zipper off the edge of the fabric. And uh, yeah, I'll do a video explaining that or showing that closer up. Um, the reason I veer the zipper off the edge of the fabric is you don't so that you don't see raw ends of the zipper, like say here at the beginning of the zipper, so you don't see like the... the uh, pinked raw ends of the zipper in the finished pouch. Um, Kathy wants to know, do you plan on making any wallet designs to go with the bag? I've been looking for a good wallet pattern and I just can't find one. I can't, Danny's not allowing me to talk about it yet, but I, I'm writing a, a huge set of patterns 
but That's I don't a know. Hint right there in itself. What else? Okay, I don't. Uh oh. Okay, I don't think he wants Top me to secret. talk about it yet. But yeah, some walletish. Your pay if you keep it up. Some walletish uh, projects will be in that. More than one. Oh, walletish exciting. project. Okay, that's all I can say right now. You know Sorry. the comments. Throw a guess out there what you think she's talking. We're not gonna say yes or no, but I'd love to see what you guys are thinking. <laughs> she's saying. Beth wants to know, can you tell us about your amazing tattoo on your left arm? It looks like Tula Pink. Oh, okay. You want to take that off the screen, so... Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I got this. I started this tattoo almost two years ago. It was four sittings, and it was each, like, six hours, so, like, 24 hours in total. And uh, it's all Tula Pink fabric, so there's the squirrel from Birds and the Bees, Tula Pink's fabric line. Um, there's the chipmunk over here from Chipper, her fabric line, and Tula Pink's my favorite fabric designer. Um, this fabric, or these designs up here are all from, uh, Foxfield, yes, and, yeah, let me grab that fabric down so I can show you that one. Uh, you want to talk while I'm, uh, Pulling this fabric down? You know, I actually had something to say. You know what? I, I have seen that a lot of ladies that sell really cool purses. I'm one thing of something I had is um, Rock Baby Scissors, I believe her name is. She makes these really cool rock star bags, great colors. They wait. just look awesome. And But I think she's plays video games. I could have one time that she mentioned that. If you guys, any bag ladies, and don't forget to put bag ladies in the comments. So you know I love that. Bag ladies, do you guys play video games at all? Oh, I'd no, love to see that. I'd no. like to see some support, you know. I don't want to talk about video oh. games. That's what happens when you leave me alone. All right, so the squirrel that I showed you on my arm right here, that's the squirrel. That's from this fabric with the squirrels on it. And then the all these guys up here, the wolf and the, the bunny, those are from Foxfield, which is all those guys are on this fabric. So there's the, there's the wolf, there's the rabbit. Oop. There's a bird over here and some of the flowers. Um, what can I say about that? Oh, it was my first tattoo, and I didn't... I talked to a friend who had a small tattoo on her foot, and it, it was like a small, very basic, with no color tattoo. And she said, uh, I asked her what the pain was like, and she said, oh, it'll be fine. You know, after a while, it just sort of starts to go numb. And I thought, in my mind, I thought I was just going to fall asleep after a while. <laughs> But no, that was probably the worst pain. And I've had two kids. That's probably the worst pain I've ever gone through. And uh, Danny went with me all four times. And I think I was like crushing, I was crushing your fingers when I was yeah, getting it done. I think done. it's what kept me from ever getting a tattoo is like, you know, um, I'm super sensitive to pain. And uh, I, when I saw Sarah like struggling, uh, I'm like, eh, you know, I have some good ideas, but I'm like, mm, just can't execute them. Our old dentist used to call him two shot Dan because yep. when he had to have any sort of procedure done, one shot wasn't enough. It had to be two or more. Have yep. you ever gotten more than two shots for something? Uh, I don't know, to be honest, because I, I think it's not a whole shot. Sometimes they give you one shot oh. and it's split in two okay. when they put it in and stuff like that. So yeah. Maybe. You, you maybe wouldn't not. be able to sit through a tattoo i don't think all right it's anyway. almost like a challenge yeah we got more okay um barbara wants to know where do you recommend getting the twin pull zippers i think you're talking about um like the two zippers on here so th this is a handbag zipper and it actually comes with the two pulls on it already i sell these handbag zippers with the two pulls in 30 inches and 40 inches on my website and they're in tons of colors how many colors if you had to guess Maybe oh, like four, a lot. maybe like forty different colors, like tons of different colors, and that makes it really easy to match a project. So um, thirty inches and forty inches. Have those at sosweetness.com. You know, I noticed there is a ton of comments. I'm glad you guys are representing the gamers here because <laughs> there's a lot of you guys, and yeah, I don't feel so like you know out there. <laughs> uh, okay, it's getting pretty late, so okay. why don't we take a few more? Sure. And we'll save some for next time. So sorry if we didn't uh, get to all the questions. Okay, Emily Ann wants one. to know, do you, did you design the tattoo then or did the tattoo person do it? So it was three different fabrics on the tattoo. And I just sent the tattoo artist, like, say I sent him the picture of this fabric. And he didn't replicate it exactly, but he took chunks of it. You know, like he took the wolf and he took the flower and he sort of arranged it. I just said, you know, 
you know best and just arrange it what you think would be the best on my arm and um, my favorite part is this part right here where it's sort of the stem of the flower like sort of points near toward my uh, wrist so I th thought it was clever he tried to put um, the placement in areas where it would look really nice like like this part right here um I guess this would be the last one. This is the last one? Okay, Danny says this is the last one. Melissa wanted to know, how long have you been doing this? So I started my, my website started as a blog in September of 2010. And I, the whole purpose of starting the blog was because I had a friend, um, Amy Lou, who, who had a weekly, every Friday she had a, what's called a linky party. So she would Post. If you're familiar with my minikins challenges every month, it's like that. So you could post a photo of what you made that week at any sort of sewing project you want. It didn't have to be bags or quilts. It could be anything. Um, you would post a photo of what you finished that week. And it was really exciting. Every, every week I would work on my project so I would have something by Friday morning to post. And I wanted to, I was always trying to be like the first in the group to be posting my photo. And it was fun because people commented on other people's photos and it was really nice to get feedback like, oh, Sarah, you did a really good job on this or I like the quilt you made this week or whatever. So that was my motivation to learn more about sewing and quilting and to finish a project every week. And I think um, that's sort of still important to me. The more you sew, the better you get. And so finishing, back then finishing a project every Friday really helped me build skills and just enjoy sewing all the more. And I didn't start selling things until um, January of 2013 is when I came out with my first pattern, which was the dot dot dash bag, um, an oldie but goodie. And uh, so when I started, I, I never had intent for, um, okay, this is gonna be my job. I worked at a pet store for 14 years until um, when I had Violet, I developed an allergy to anything with fur and so at that point, I couldn't take care of any furry things anymore. I took care of the the fish and the reptiles. So I was feeding snakes. I was feeding tarantulas. I was cleaning fish tanks. And thankfully, the sewing worked out for me. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. My arms were getting pretty chapped for being in fish from being in a fish tank all day. So, um, yeah, that's... It's funny thing is, I actually worked at a pet store way before I knew Sarah for uh, many years. And that was a great, I loved it myself, but I developed asthma, so I had to quit working at that pet store. I was actually telling my best friend a story on the phone this evening. Um, I actually lost my, or I thought I lost my wedding ring in a fish tank um, from when I was cleaning it. And that was pretty funny because I she went called back, me. I went back to the store after the store was closed and I was trying to look through all the fish tanks, like the gravel and stuff. And the, the ring ended up being on... I think it was on your nightstand or something. It was on the, the desk or the whatever the, <sighs> what do you call it? So Danny still wants to get a fish tank for our house now. We don't have any pets right now, but I'm like, no, I'm not cleaning any more fish tanks. <laughs> <laughs> I've cleaned I would take a reptile. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, you know, it's a big commitment and something you're going to have for a while. So maybe it's good we don't have it. So I talked to my friends who do have them. They're like, yeah, we love them at first. And it's like, you know, just a, just a, a chore at the end of the day. And then if you travel, you have to find someone, you know, help you take care of your animals and stuff like that. All right, so um, that's all the questions. Um, let me grab this clutch. Oh, don't over forget here. to oh, yeah. share this video, please. Uh, if you are watching us on Facebook, go to YouTube, <laughs> subscribe there as well. We really appreciate it if you guys could do that. So, we're thinking of next Tuesday for Ask Sarah to show a video on how to make this clutch with the cutout metal handles. So, these handles kind of go in, the simil in a similar fashion to how a twist lock would go in. So, it's kind of a basic clutch, but I made one in sort of a pebbly vinyl and it's kind of cool. So we're thinking about doing a video for this uh, for next Tuesdays. So it's between this and magnetic snap tutorial. So we're trying to this wait. This looks like a pretty easy sew too. It is an easy sew. So my, maybe we'll do it for next Tuesday. Yeah. All right. So thanks so much for joining me for Ask Sarah. We'll see you again next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Happy sewing. Good night, everyone. Well, I forgot to do it. Oh.